Hi, this is QA Shahin, and today we are going to have a look at interacting with a drop down field through WebDriver.js. So, what's the agenda of this video? Well, firstly, we're going to try and find a way of identifying a drop down box. On my test room blog site, I do have a test site that I've built purely for you all to use. So we will go to a page where there is a drop down box and we'll try and find out how we can interact with it. Once we've identified a drop down box, we will actually try to select a value from that drop down box and then try and do something with it. As always, if you'd like to follow the blog post, then you can do that by simply going to this URL where I've got all the code there ready for you. So if you want to copy paste it in or explore it a little bit more, instead of having to type it out, then you can do that also. So let's begin. So once you navigate to the testroom.com, just scroll down and select the test web app. So this is the site that I've built to help you all write some automated test against. Navigate to the adoption link and on this link you will find a drop down box. So what we would like to do is to navigate to the testroom.com forward slash web app, click on the adoption link and then try and find a value in this drop down box. Naturally we would need to identify the drop down box first somehow and once we've done that then click on one of these values. So let's try and have a go at trying to do just that. So the first thing I'm going to do is just navigate to the WebDriver.js directory. And in this directory, if we do a quick ls, then we can see there's nothing really inside. It's just got the Chrome driver itself, some debug logs and some folders. So we don't have any scripts yet. So I'm going to go ahead and create a script.js and then I'm going to open it in a text editor. So the first thing I said we would like to do is just to simply navigate to this page. So let's try to do that first. So as always, I'm just going to say var web driver, which is equal to require selenium web driver. And then I'm going to say driver is equal to webdriver.builder with capabilities, which will be webdriver capabilities.chrome.build. And then I'm just going to say driver.get. And we will navigate to the test room forward slash web app. And once we've done that, what we want to do is actually click on this adoption link. So let's inspect this and see if there's anything in there that we can use. So it looks like the adoption link has an ID. So let's try and use that. So I'm going to say driver.find element and I'm going to say web driver by ID and the value there was adoption underscore link and once I've actually found it I'm going to try and click on it and just for quick measure let's put in a driver sleep just so the page will pause for a brief moment so that we can see that it's worked. Okay, and that should be it. Hopefully there's no errors in here and to prove that there are no errors or to trial it, let's quickly run this and see what happens. So I'm just going to say node.script and it looks like there were some errors. So let's quickly resolve those. Of course, I need to give it as a new web driver. Let's go back. Okay, so it looks like it worked. Great. 
So a really quick summary, we navigated to the test site and we clicked on the adoption link and then we just paused the page for two seconds just to see that we were on the right page. For anyone who's not familiar with this, Sleep is just a method that basically forces the thread that's running the driver to just pause for a moment and it takes in a value of milliseconds. So 2000 milliseconds is essentially two seconds. Right, so now that we've done that, what we would like to do is actually somehow first find a way to identify this drop down. And once we've done that, we want to then find a way of actually selecting a value from that drop down. So, how do we do that? Well, let's inspect this and let's take it from there. So I can see that this actually has an ID. So that's a good start. That means that's one way of trying to identify it. And if we have a look here, something that's common between all of these values. So what are these? These are basically the drop downs that you see. So if I expand this, I can see there's a value of today. There's a value of first day of the next week, first day of the next month and so on. So these are all the options that are visible for that drop down. Now in HTML, a drop down box is usually represented using a select tag and the items that you see inside a drop down box are usually represented using an options tag. And in this case, we have a select tag, which is an ID and we have many options tag, which each has a value key and the value then has some value as part of that value tag. Now that sounds a bit confusing. So let me quickly summarize that. Here we have a tag and this is of type value. And this is the actual value for the value tag. So I hope that's not confusing because it can be confusing. We're using the same term to mean two different things. In other words, this is the key and this is the value for that key. And we're going to try and use this information to then interact with the drop down. So let's go back. Now that we have some information, how can we actually do this? Well, the way I do it is, first of all, the drop down is a field that I assume that I might need to use a different value for in the future. So today, maybe I want the first item from that list, but tomorrow I might want the second item in a different test, for instance. So how could I do this? Well, I think the best way to do it is to actually write a function that can do something like that. So I would like to say something like function select from drop down and naturally I'm going to pass in a value to that so I'm just going to say value okay so at some point I am going to call this select from drop down and in fact we can write this right now so what I would like to do is to say something like select from drop down and I want to select the today value. So if we remember back to the multiple option tags that were visible, one of them had a value of today. So I'm just going to say today. So in case you don't know this, this is sort of the higher hierarchy of development. Before I've actually written the contents of the method, I'm already thinking about what I want the method to do and what I want it to return. That way it makes it a lot more easier to declare the interface to your test. In other words, by writing this bit first, you're actually making your code a little bit more easier to access from a testing perspective. But that's a different topic for a different video altogether. Going back to the method, I know that for this run, a value of today will come here. But the first thing I want to do, like I said, is to somehow identify the web driver itself. So how could I do that? Well, I know that it has a value of ID. So I'm going to say something like driver dot find element. And I'm going to say web driver. And instead of using the ID, I'm going to use CSS. And I'm going to say by CSS. And in this, I want to use the ID. So to use the ID in CSS is square brackets and it was an ID 
which was equal to and in here we need to use double quotations remember if you want to use quotations in quotations you need to make sure they are of different types and here I want to pass in the ID which was start underscore select I think okay so this will now give us the web driver equivalent to the drop down field and what I want to do is I want to click on it so once I click on it it then opens up all the options that are visible on the page now once I've actually clicked on it what I then want to do is say something like driver dot find element and in here I want to say something like value selected and I want to click on it so what is value selected so value selected in my head at the moment is a combination of the drop-down box as well as the value that is passed in so how can I do that well this will contain the value of both the ID of the drop-down as well as the value that is passed into this test so I'm going to declare a const and I'm going to say something like value selected and this is going to be equal to webdriver dot by CSS and in here I am going to pass in the ID as well as some more CSS to actually identify the value so in this case I know there was an option row for each of the items in the drop down and then for each of the options there was a value which was then equal to some value and in here I am then going to say value and then I'm just going to close this off now this will look confusing so let me break this down the first bit is the actual ID of the drop-down box and this is equivalent to each of the option tags inside the select tag and the reason why I've done it this way is because I'm assuming at some point the value of today will be different I may want to select something else and in order to do that instead of hard coding it parameterize it so now when the drop-down runs this will effectively return the full CSS path of the value that I wish to select which is this and the next thing that will happen is the actual drop down will be clicked on so that it opens up all of the options and with a little bit of luck it would actually end up selecting that value that is then displayed on the drop down field so let's save this and run it and see what happens So it looks like I've got some missing syntax. So let's quickly go and correct that. So I've missed off a bracket from here. Let's try that again. And it looks like I've missed something else as well. Let's quickly resolve that. So it looks like I missed a space here. Let's try that one more time. And you can see it actually did end up selecting the today value from the drop down box. So going back, the reason why this space is important is because in CSS it is trying to identify some hierarchy because there wasn't a space in there it sort of started to assume that this thing wasn't hierarchically related so going back to the function this is somewhat of a complicated function because it can be seen as confusing the benefit to doing it this way 
is that we can now change this value to be something else. It could be pointing to a different value in one of the option tags, and it will then select that item from the drop down field. So, what have we learned in this video? So, in this video, we looked at essentially how to interact with a drop down field. We looked at why you would want to interact with a field. Sometimes it's just a case when you write an automated test. And we looked at how to write some simple CSS code to firstly get the value that you actually want to interact with. So in other words, parameterizing the whole process. And we looked at how to then actually click on the drop down field so it opens up and then select the value that we actually want to display. Albeit, we also use the driver.sleep to take a little bit advantage of just keeping the page open briefly so that we can see the value actually being selected. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I will see you in the next one.